to Sand City Sports. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King, and we're back again to bring you all the sports and current events news stories that you need to know. Folks, you can see that we have a special guest appearance, okay, a founding member of the Sand City Sports team. Drew Pops is back. Woo! Yeah. Yes. He Come is on. back in the building. Uh, the NBA season is underway. You are looking at Celtics fan royalty. Right here, Ripping okay. Right here. You know what I mean? If, if, if this was like Game of Thrones, okay, th this would be House Popolo, you know, in terms of his Celtics prestige. Sure okay, yeah. so we needed him on the show today. He made the time and his busy schedule was very busy. He just came from hooping, actually. Ooh, okay, sore, sore. man was in the gym getting the job, you know, because when, when the Celtics are out there doing the work they need to do, which we're gonna touch on, touch on, okay, the fan royalty is also in the gym doing the work that oh, needs yeah. to be done. Okay, but nonetheless, he may tend to be with us here at the Cape Cod Media Center in Dennis so we can get this show cracking. All right, so uh, as we say, NBA season, uh, we're going to start uh, from, from, from the genesis of what was seen last Tuesday uh, in L.A. I was going to say Lakerland, okay? But it's Not disputable, more. all right? It's in dispute. Who is the king of L.A.? Which team, okay, holds sway? Uh, and and we, we were treated to a, a, a very good ball game uh, with the Lakers and the Clippers. Uh, but a, as we all know, uh, in, in round one uh, went decisively uh, to Clip City, uh, which many people think very well uh, at the end of the season might be Chip City. Uh, a, a, as the L.A. Clippers, uh, minus Paul George, uh, defeated the Los Angeles Lakers. We'll get that final score for you on the screen. But it, it, it was not close. The, the final score might have been in, in, in the double digits. Uh, and I'm going to start by saying, uh, you know, uh, it's one game. And we need to be clear about that. LeBron James was clear about that. But as we learned last year here in Titletown, it, it does get late early. And so for me, I'm looking quite closely at these first 20 games, first 10 games, first 20 games, to see how these teams start off. Again, one game, uh, but I thought that this was a heavyweight championship bout type of a scenario, type of a setting, type of a feel. Uh, and so based on that hype, I was frankly expecting more from the Los Angeles Lakers. Many other people were. Uh, and the Clippers, uh, they just seemed to be. And then, uh, let me just say that, you know, this was a, a one, two, three-point game going into the fourth quarter, all right? But in the fourth quarter, the, the Clippers pulled away. They, they, they made it clear, you know, or, or the game, they won the game handily, down the stretch, and what you saw was uh, they, they were the better team, capital T, you know, and then for basketball people, along with that, you know, you also have, uh, now, now Doc Rivers, established NBA championship coach, Frank Vogel, not as well established, doesn't have, you know, he's kind of more of a journeyman in terms of coaches. Uh, we'll take it a step further, Jerry West, the greatest executive in basketball history, that's undisputed, possibly the greatest executive in team sports history. All right. And then Steve Ballmer, the richest owner in team sports. All right. And so what we saw on the court, advantage Clippers. Uh, but then organizationally, it's also very much decidedly advantage Clippers. And so, um, you know, Drew, uh, you know, uh, I'm just really with the Clippers, the Clippers hype. I'm buying in and, and, and why I take the pause and why I'm at a loss for words is they also have that junkyard dog in them beyond being talented. We're talking to Patrick Beverly's. We're talking to Montrez Harrell's. Kawhi Leonard being from the City of Angels. Same thing being true for Paul George, Lou Williams. And that's why I, I'm, I'm decidedly impressed. Is because not only are, are, were they better, just, just man for man, okay, but I also think they're hungrier. Uh, and so, you know, I, I'm quite impressed. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, LA is now Clip City. Uh, the Lakers gonna have to earn that back. Drew, your thoughts? Uh, I agree. You know, the Clippers are loaded. L.A., uh, the Lakers, are they're also loaded. But if you look at it, I think that the Clippers, you got if you're going to go through each, you know, avenue, they got the better coach, like you said. They have the better executives. Mm -hmm. If you look at that team on paper, I mean, the Lakers have a bunch of, you know, like any LeBron team, a bunch of classic older players, veterans that, you know, they still got something left in the tank. But – Almost more of a name than, you know, what the they bring to the court. The contribution. You know, um, but Kawhi Leonard, I think right now, is the best player. I think he's the best basketball player on the face of the earth. Agreed. And even without Paul George, they went out and won. So 
it's interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see what the Clippers look like with Paul George, mm. with that defense. Mm. Those are two top, maybe top three defensive players in the NBA right now, and they did it without one of them. So, mm. I mean, if the Lakers couldn't get it done at home with out Paul George, it's going to be interesting to see if they can get it done when he's back. So, there's still so many games to go. I think there's like 79 games to go. So, I mean, one injury could change everything. A lot of, of things can change, but... Right now, I mean, the Clippers are obviously the team to beat. They have been since before the season started. So, I mean, we just got to see what happens. But the Clippers. Yeah, I guess. yeah, many people, executives picking the Clippers. Uh, but, you know, there, there's one, you know, there, there's talking to talk, and then there's walking to walk. You know, and, and so there was that uncertainty that, you know, it, based on the eye test, has been dispelled in large part. You brought up a good point, Drew, in terms of it was a home game for the Lakers. It was actually a home game for the Clippers. Nonetheless, the stadium was decidedly favoring the Lakers to the point that, you know, at, at Kawhi Leonard, I believe it was during his intro, got booed. Yeah. You know? So the, even though the Clippers, you know, they, the, I mean, they both play, we all know this, they both play in the stadium, but, you know, the, the court was Clippers. The Clippers were, were wearing their home jerseys. Right. Uh, but nonetheless, in terms of L.A. and how the city feels, uh, you know, you saw that people still have this attachment to the Lakers based on the history and tradition. You know, this goes to the point of, you know, when Kawhi Leonard was at the uh, L.A. Rams games. You know, yeah. people, you know, giving them, you know. And, and, you know, this is frankly shocking to me because, and this is what I had to bring up, you know, in the comment. Kawhi Leonard is from L.A., okay? That's his hometown. Same way that, you know, as you, well, everyone knows, LeBron James established 1984 in Akron, Ohio, and he's very proud of that. Okay, this is... Uh, you know, I have to kind of reference an outstanding 30 for 30, 30 Larry and Muhammad, like uh, the majority, overwhelming majorities of the 30 for 30. This is absolutely exceptional. You know, but it looks at like that fight between Larry and Muhammad late in Ali's career when, when Holmes was the true champion, okay, but Ali had the legend and legacy. And, and peop, you know, even though they really should have appreciated the great champion that Larry Holmes was becoming, you know, because it was Ali and what he's meant to people, you know, Larry, you know, people, uh, you know, th this is through his life, you know, that people resented. Angelo is telling the referee to stop it. Mundini is arguing with him. Check him out. What do you want to do? The game's over. The commute is over. The commute is over. All right. I stopped the fight. All right. He would not. He would not give in, Angelo Dundee. He cared about his fighter too much. That's it. They stopped the fight at TKO. Larry, I'd like you to explain why you've been crying. You know, so I really respect a whole lot. Really respect Ali a whole lot. It hurt you to punish him that way, didn't it? I feel that he fought one of the baddest heavyweight in the world today, and you cannot take credit from him. him beating Muhammad Ali, which the fight should have never happened in the first place, yeah. okay? Because Muhammad Ali was over the hill, and, and, and it was Larry's turn. And so, again, in this Lakers-Clippers situation, you know, that narrative, this is year 17 for LeBron. People, 17. Kind of showing the time. You know, he, he, he is um, a quote-unquote, you know, ageless champion, and guys are playing Vince Carter and the work that he's doing, you know, in Atlanta well into his 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that. But Kawhi and Paul, they're both in their late 20s. You know, they are in really the prime of their right. career, whereas LeBron, you know, we don't want to part with our star. But 17, he's been doing this since he's 18. How many gold medals? He's been in three Olympics. How many trips to the finals? Close to 10. A lot. Um, and so, you know, as your point, you, you see that at times, and that, that's just basic. That's, that's the, the, the realities of life. But I, I'm frankly, you know, in terms of how this whole thing, you got two kids, two guys, they're not the the personalities of LeBron James, this multimedia conglomerate, but they're homegrown L.A., you know? Yeah. They're from, you know, it's like, the, you know, if, if we get, you know, it's like, like Pat Connaughton plays for the Bucks, but he's from Boston. If he were to get picked up by the Celtics, which 